My name is Karen Golden Orante. I am here today at the Cohasset Historical Society for Living Histories, and I have the opportunity to interview mother daughter. I have Eileen Mitchell Sargent and her daughter Jan Simplest, or Jan Sargent Simplest. And what's fun that we'll start talking about in a little bit is. Um, that Eileen is from the class, CHS class of 1941, and Jan is from the CHS class of 1963. So we have a long story to tell, but we're, we'll try to fill in as many fun points that we've spent the morning talking about here at the Historical Society. So Eileen, could you just tell us a little bit about your recollections as a child in Cohasset, well, you coming to visit your grand, your parent, uh, your grandparents. My yes, uh, I moved to Cohasset when I was in the second grade, and visited with my grandparents, Mitchells, and my other grandparents were in Hingham. So after. Uh, living in one house in Beechwood for a year, we bought a house on Doan Street. And I attended the Beechwood School for the second grade and used to walk up to the Four Corners and get the bus every day. And uh, came, then I, Oh, I didn't get the bus there. I, I walked back and forth from the house. And then in the next year, I was in third grade, and we came all the way down to Cohasset, to the Ripley Road School. And that's what, yeah, so your bus stop for third grade was right at the corner of Beechwood and, and Doan Street. Street. And that is where the green bus, I mean, yes. at the, that point in time, school buses were green, not green. yellow. Yes, they were green. And so we came down to Cohasset to the uh, third grade and continued to the sixth grade. At the Ripley Road at School. The Ripley Road School. So now what were your parents, when you were, when you had moved to the Beechwood area to be near your grandparents, what, um, what memories do you have of Beechwood at that point in time? Well, I mean, it was a big neighborhood at that point. It was a big neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, most of the activities were from the Beechwood Church because mm. it was the closest. Uh, and we just had all the Christian endeavor and all the activities there. And then we, we, uh, as we got older, we went to the the BIA Association Hall, and now that was the building where the old school was at that point. No, no. no. the where BIA was... had a had a wing that had the library. Okay. And the library was there, and Mary Stoddard was the librarian, and we would just love to you know be able to walk up to the library and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and there was this stage oh, the, on the BA at, at, at the hall. Yeah, at the hall. And that, that's where they had uh, the Grange and other activities for the community. So now the Grange you were very involved with as yes. well. Yes, at 14 uh, you could be a member and our parents were members there too. And you visit other Ranges of different towns and so forth. And what 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 was the purpose, or what what was your and, and the endeavor of the Grange? It was a, a, an agricultural association. And, yeah. And they sponsored uh, you know different fairs that you went to and different farm animals and things. So. 
Now the church was was um, a big part of the Beachwood. The Beachwood Congo Church was a big part of the community. Yes. And sadly, after 100 years, the church closed last last year. But another. But the church had a lot of uh, was involved with a lot of mm, annual activities at, 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 up there, up at the um, up at the Beachwood. Um, ball field for instance or just even in general but one of the one of the fun memories that many generations have talked about was the Beechwood bonfire oh yes which was huge i mean that was months of of accumulating the, the wood for the they bonfire were, they were railroad ties all railroad ties that yeah. they collected and it was built on the way the ball field is now, but it was mostly swampland that had a, a drainage ditch that ran through the middle of it. So there was a drainage ditch running through the middle of the ball field? Ball field. And they had the, uh, the bonfire built in that area there that was a good safe area. Right. So at that point, now when you were a young girl at the beach with the firehouse, was not where we remember the firehouse, but uh, it, around the corner. It was it was uh, backed into the cemetery on Doan Street, quite yeah. near the corner. Yeah, and uh, it took a chunk out of the, the cemetery. cemetery. And then I remember moving the fire station over to the ball field. Where the basketball, where the basketball are. court is now. And then since it is, was moved to Situate. Oh, that, that building, that yeah, building. right. Well, yeah, that's... Um, so the other activities that, that you remember as well, um, neighborhood activities for the, 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 was the carriage parade or the... Was the, the lawn party. The lawn the party. The Beechwood lawn party was held up at Billings Pratt Park, the little diamond. Okay. Just before you get to the church. And they had the turtle races and, and everybody baked food, just like any church fair. But it, it was a big doing because it, it uh, all the people from Cohasset came as well as Beechwood. And where it was in the west end of Situate. They so, also those people participated. So. And um, and I remember the doll carriage parades because I got dressed up, uh, whether it was my actually doll carriage or there were bi uh, crepe paper on bicycles, and we we'd all take part. If from the time I was I I could push a doll carriage or ride a bike, I, I was in those parades, and there was they would judge. So there were some things that are very specific about now. Was the church fair was different than the than this fair that you're talking about now, or was it all? all? Oh, oh. There was a f church fair. It was usually the end of June, mm -hmm. maybe in June. Sometime. But there are certain things that people will remember from their childhood, saying, "Oh, I remember that rock candy," or they remember different items that were annually there at the fair. They had the turtle races. Yeah, the big, this is where the big. We draw things. <laughs> Did you train your t people train their turtles to go as fast it, it, as possible? It was, it was a fun thing, you know. Somebody would get in and they bet your money and <laughs> win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> betting. So um, here, just to show, this was a picture of this was picture of you as you were a babysitter I, for the I the was new a minister for the minister, and so I made him his his outfit. So. <laughs> as a, a high school student in my uh, sewing classes. <laughs> That's cute. So, um, so one of the photographs that you have here is your original home. Yeah. And what was the address of that? 84 Doan Street. 84 Doan Street. So this yeah. will show a photograph of that up close. That's, um, and also of you in your, your, cheerleading outfit here. Oh, yes. And my, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was a cheerleader. Yeah. And that's when we used to play Nantucket, too. And we went to Nantucket for the games 
every year, every other year. So it was fun. Yeah. So and this was this is a photograph of your mum. That's yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Now these photographs that you brought in were pictures of your girlfriends from when you went on to high school, which um, that facility, yes. that school, the Osgood School the was. Osgood School. Mary Figueredo was was the class secretary. Yeah. And uh, uh, she just passed away last year. And Belmira Barrows. And my cousin Pauline Blakeman. So we, this was all taken at the Osgood School. So one of the, you just, when you, you just took a walk around the um, Ripley Road School, yeah. which is now our library and was bringing back memories of your being in there. Your teacher, you had said, was where the children's library is now. Was your third grade teacher, you yes. said? Miss Wing. Miss Wing was your third grade teacher. Yes. And then I remember we had, uh, uh, in the... In the back wing was the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth grades, and my sixth grade teacher was uh, Miss Dunn, and Odie Jason was the fifth grade teacher. Was a combined fifth and sixth grades. Yeah. And uh, Miss DeLong was the fourth grade. Wow, it's so. amazing that you can remember all those <laughs> teachers. <laughs> Not that, not that recent. Um, and so, now you couldn't walk through the um, Osgood School because that's that's, that's long gone. gone. That's gone. But your memories of that were are pretty sharp well, as well. I, yes, I, I remember playing basketball. The court was on the third floor, and that's where we had our music. And I had Mr. Taylor for the music, and and. Then I, I hated the uh, science class because we had <laughs> Mr. Ripley, and he walked back and forth all the time, and I couldn't stand it. Everybody was walking. I wanted to stand and talk to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, it, it was it was fun there at the Osgood School. We had our sports in the back. There there was much room, but we had our little softball teams and things. Yeah. So, um, when you were a senior at the Osgood School, you met a very nice gentleman who... Well, I, I had met him uh, when I was in the second grade. Okay. And he lived around the corner from me. But I didn't start dating him until I was a senior. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so... That was your... That was your husband. That was my husband. Yeah. Yes, so. so he was from the neighborhood. He was from the neighborhood. Yeah. And, and his his sister used to babysit for us. Yeah. So. Um, and before we just before we go down to that, oh here we'll have to show this uh, also. This was part of the um, part of the. Uh, the doll carriage parade. Yeah, the doll carriage parade. This, this doll carriage parade was over in Hingham. Okay. At Hingham Center when I was small. And my sister with her doll carriage decorated too and my brother with his bicycle. So I guess that's what I that's was in the habit of being in doll carriage parades for my parents. <laughs> so I had to move it down. And then and, what is this photograph and, down here? And this photograph is... Um, just a, a picture of me in an old car that my father had in the in the yard in Beechwood on Dome Street, and this is the picture of our house when the floods came from the Bound Brook and flooded all around the whole house, so we couldn't. There was no control of that. Yeah, right. So, but it's it's all straightened out now, and yeah. it's all. <laughs> Um, so when you um, graduated college, I mean high school, you went on to study um, nursing. nursing. Well, I, I started at the 
Braintree Convalescent Home. And then uh, I had to have my appendix out and whatnot. So I, I ended up uh, looking for another school. So I, that following September, I started at the Holly Hospital in Uppins Corner in Dorchester. And I was only there a few months when I was, uh, became sick and high temperatures and they couldn't find out what the problem was. And they finally decided I had rheumatic fever and they wouldn't let me finish nursing. So I spent a year in bed with a rheumatic fever. And then, then, uh, uh, went to work at the Hingham shipyard because, because the war. It's oh, it's the, war. the war. Yeah. <laughs> and I worked at, uh, materials planning where they had, uh, the men at the blueprints and all the, the gals were at the desks behind. And when they found out I had three years of mechanical drawing, they let me work on the blueprints. <laughs> so then they transferred me to spare parts <laughs> with, with eight men. And well, I, that, was, that, was, that was a promotion, though. That was a promotion, but I, I felt so bad because I was having to leave all my friends. Oh. So. I, I worked at Spare Parts, and that's where I worked when I got married. So now the Spare Part part of the shipyard was actually on 3A now, it where the... They, they were both on 3A. Yeah. The, the uh, materials planning was the last building on the right, right on the street. Yeah. And, and Spare Parts was the first building okay. on the right. So, so when you were... You got married at that what, I got during that job, at that point. yeah. And moved to uh, Norwell, to Stuart's sister's house. She was with the Red Cross, and her husband was overseas, so they had a nice new cape. So we moved into that, hmm. but then found it was a little too far away from Cohasset for our 4-H and church and different activities. So and. Stuart was working at the water company, so we got a chance to be, uh, Stuart was first paid teenage supervisor at the community center, which was at the corner of Sawyer Street and Main, South Main Street. Which is the Tan Buck, Tan, Tan Stucker Home, uh, Farber Estate. Yeah, so Farber So that was the town community center at that yeah, point. it was at that time, before they bought the the one in the corner. Um, and so you lived in that building? We, we had a five-room apartment in that building, and that's when Janet was born when we lived there. And what took place in the uh, community center? Well, they had a, a well-child clinic, and they had, they had a nursery school there, and they had the garden club, and different organizations would meet there. And then on Wednesday nights and Saturday nights, they had the teenagers, and they had the jukebox. And all. so, could anybody go to the wellness center from town? And uh, oh yes, so yes. any baby could yes. visit yeah. and get yes. checked yes. And babies, yeah. for free. Mm -hmm. And was that something the town paid for? Uh, yes, I guess they did. Yeah, because they had the visiting nurse. There was one visiting nurse, right? Yeah, there was one visiting nurse in the town. Oh, that's that's interesting. So now Stewart worked at the Beechwood pumping, pumping station. station. Yes, for twelve years there. Um, so we have some pretty spectacular photographs that we will show as well at yeah. the Beechwood pumping station. So we were talking about where the pumping station was located, and we talked about going to the end of Riverside Drive. But that's where the piggery was yes. at the end. And so the pumping station was even beyond, beyond that. Beyond that. Um, and you could get to it through a pathway from Doan Street is the way we used to walk through the path and get to the pumping station. And and the, year round, he'd walk in snow and oh, walk yes. every... Mm. And, and then uh, 
it was just a little beyond where my house was to, to go through. And then from the pump station to the Lily Pond, there was a pipeline. And they used to keep that free of brush and everything. And, and you were saying he had to walk that he had to pipeline check, every check day? The, check the leaks and, and everything, so. And he took care of all the, the machinery and the pumps, and he was studying microbiology at Suffolk University, and so he, he did all the bacteriological studies for, for the town. But it was owned by the American Water Company, and uh, he also did, did testing for lots of other municipalities. So during this time working at the, at the pumping station, he was going to he, Suffolk. He went to Suffolk. He, after being out of high school for 10 years, he went back to school. And um, he worked the midnight to eight shift. Mm -hmm. And then be in Boston at nine o'clock. So many times he would uh, get some of his papers done and bring them home to me at five o'clock in the morning and I would get up and type them and have them ready for him to take to class. Wow. At o'clock. That, that's amazing. It was harder work than anyone could imagine. He he kept all the machinery running so that um, to, to chlorinate the water and there was one time when something happened to the machine and he was fixing it and he actually got chlorinated and his lung, one of his lungs was damaged because of it. And another time... Uh, but he, he did get to the phone and called for help, and so they came and rescued him then. Wow. So. And another time, he, he cut off one of his fingers, almost totally cut, but it, it got put back on. But yeah, it was a dangerous job. Yeah. And he was by himself. And he was alone the, doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Most right. of the time. And this was the only pumping station Cohasset had yeah, right, for their exactly, water supply. Right, right, right. Interesting. Um, do you know what year the pumping station was built? I have to look back on that. It was it was, it was quite a while. Yeah. But it was certainly necessary for the rest of the town to have water based right. on that. So now he was doing this while you're, you're how old are you at this point? Oh, he worked at the water company from 42 to... 1950, 40, 44 to 56, I think it yes, was. Like that. Okay, so, so we had all three, three children. No, I had two children. Well, by the time you finished, right. you had three children. Three children, by, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was sort of, uh, because he worked nights and weekends and holidays, um, it was sort of the headquarters for our family. Yeah, yeah the, the pumping station. <laughs> and whenever there was a fire in, in the middle of the night, um, he had to go to the point of the fire to make sure that there was enough water pressure in the mains. And stop the motors at the pumping station. And the for the back. hydrants? Yes, and yeah. so, so we were often we're witnessing welcome fires all around the town of Cohasset because, you know, the, the um, fire station had certain numbers and we had on our kitchen cabinet, you open one of the doors and it had all the, uh, the codes. So if it was 531, we'd know exactly what, what street it was and what, near what number house to go to the fire to make sure that the water pressure was right. okay yeah. for the high. Interesting. <laughs> so it was a family affair, the whole <laughs> water pump station life. I mean, to the point, you actually even brought him like holiday meals. Oh, yes, we brought him we, Thanksgiving dinner at the pumping know, station. When he was working. And we, so. Meanwhile, everybody else is home having you know dinner around their dining room table and you're all eating at the pumping station. 
I just hope that townspeople know what Stuart and the rest of the family <laughs> went through. Um, or uh, you know, that that is that's the behind the scenes of of whether it's your water or your electricity or your phone. There is someone there while, and we're all taking advantage of of that. Um, so, and then he, he had a lab. We had a lab in the house, so that he used to test the water for the town of Cohasset for the uh, ocean and different things. So, also anyone, any uh, anyone who had a private well, he did their well testing. So, and we what know, was he testing for? Well, coliform index. Yeah, you know, just to make sure that you know. Back then, they t tested for much fewer things than they do now. Yeah, uh, there were no heavy metals to look for or whatever. But um, was he was very much involved in the Vedenta Center because they had a problem with their well, and he was he, he got to be very good friends with Swami Pamananda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what they still have their well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about after the, um, so after 1955, you graduated, you were still in school. Where did he, where did, what happened then? All right, so he went into teaching. Okay. And what oh, were no, you? No, that's not what he did first. No, he worked at um, Agrico, which is the fertilizer company that in. Next Street, North Weymouth, there, North backs, Weymouth. Up, backs up to the shipyard. There. Okay. And what were you doing at that point? Uh, now, what, I'm, so, what, uh, I'm sorry, what were you doing at that point? And can you also highlight your experience at the Cohasset Hospital? Well. I know that probably came earlier. Yeah, yeah it came in, earlier. In between the two nursing schools. In, two, in between nursing schools. And I... When I finished the three months at Braintree, I was hired at Cohasset Hospital, which uh, the operating rooms were up on the third floor, and they, uh, it was, Dr. Schott was the doctor that came there. And I was left alone one night by myself. Are there patients in the hospital? Yeah, there were patients in the hospital, and and then I had to wash the instruments for the maternity section, waiting for somebody to come in. <laughs> but uh, I didn't work there too long, anyhow. Yeah, that, that, that would be an eerie building to be in all oh, by yourself was, with the patients. Yeah, with the patients. I mean, did they have bell systems? I mean, how did you know if somebody yeah. was in distress? Yeah, they, they had the bells. Yeah. Things, but it was, it was different. <laughs> yeah. So just, if anybody doesn't know, that's the building, I don't know what number, but that is the building at Ripley Road and right. Sawyer Street, yeah, the large right building the that's the, is still the, there. The other building beside it was the nurse's. Now that at one point was a nursing home, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then, while Stuart has um, Stuart was working in North Weymouth, yeah. where and I was just being a mother to being a children. mother and, and yeah. doing part time jobs here and there and everything else. So I she did you did some some housework housework for and and I. I worked at Lido Travel for a oh, while. Yeah, yeah. I worked at Naomi's Hat Salon, and was that during the? T were you at Campbell Jewelers during this time? No, I wasn't at Campbell Jewelers until after that. Okay. And, and then I was at Campbell's when Danny had to go into Boston every Tuesday, and and uh, so S then I I worked during the holidays and things. So. So now, Campbell Jewelers, we were talking about, that was in what's, what's called the Lilac House. You, uh, well, I didn't work there then. Okay. I worked when he was down. Down at the... Well, but, just... But his, when he was at the Lilac House, it was... Uh, which, which was Lilac, uh, yeah. and it's now yellow. Well, it wasn't called the Lilac House when he lived there. Okay. It was just Campbell's Jewelers. Okay. <laughs> so so um, then after... After Stuart left Agri Agrico, yeah. Then 
what ha where did you go and what did he you got, do? He got invited into teaching with no teaching experience, but some friend said apply. So he did his first year of teaching at Whitman High School. Oh. And that was in 1955 because John was born in July. So we we went up to the school and I laid him on the on the lab benches and then while he was taking stock of the chemicals that were there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so so back before OSHA. Yeah. So so then uh, he was in charge of the adult ed courses too for an extra to get more money. Because he the the salary for a teacher back then was it was about eighteen hundred dollars a year. Mm, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had to do something else to, to get some more A money. year? A year, yes. And he had been an analytical chemist for this fertilizer company, and the company wanted to send, because he had done so much good work, they wanted to send him to the headquarters in New Jersey, Cataract and he New didn't New want to move the family to New Jersey. So in order to stay in, in Cohasset, he asked people advice, and that's when he went into teaching. Oh. The, the pay was atrocious, <laughs> but he was the best teacher. <laughs> I bet. In one of your favorite courses, science, but hopefully he didn't. <laughs> and, and then he, he um, had to take extras to get more money, so he took uh, the adult ed course. So I went up to Whitman and took the furniture refinishing and cake decorating. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you supplemented the family. That's awesome. So now at that point, um, now at that point, who, you've graduated in 1963 from yes. Cohasset High School. So by then, my dad was chair of the science department in Mar at Marshfield High School. Okay. So I was Mr. Sargent's daughter when I was a cheerleader and we played Marshfield. Oh. <laughs> so, um, so he went from Whitman to Marshfield. Yes. And stayed there for a number of years. And so he, uh, they had the, the Marshallers, the singing group there, and it was, the music director was single. So they needed a female to accompany them on their different outings. So I was the one that, that went along to chaperone the, the kids. So that's, that's what you, so the, the three, your three kids are in Crosset High School yeah. at that point, but you're helping out in Marshville, you know, in Marshville yeah. wherever you could. Um, so when, now you graduated in 63, what year did your sister graduate? 67. 67, so she's having her 50th reunion this summer. Okay, and John graduated and John in 73. 73. Right. Now, after, now after everyone's graduated, John's the last to graduate. Then, then I decided that I would go back to school I had always told them that you have to finish what you start. Yeah, <laughs> so always. Always. Yeah. Everything is, is a family rule. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to nursing school. At that time, Stuart was uh, in Quincy. At, uh, he was, he was uh, Wendell's math science director. And he uh, moved up to federal aid coordinator and title one director. Oh. So, so he was up there, and I went to Quincy Junior College. Yeah, or, or Votech. Yeah, Quincy Votech, and then graduated from there, and then worked at South Shore Hospital, and uh, till we we retired to New Hampshire. And that's that's when you took it. Now you I took your an EMT course I up in New Hampshire. I took my EMT course in in Hull. Okay. Right, right after I graduated with okay. the Coast Guard. With the Coast Guard, it's the first year the Coast Guard had to take the the course. Yeah. And uh, so we. So you were able to carry that EMT training yes. with you. Yes. 
So one of the things we didn't, there were one of the things that we spoke about that I think is important to mention. So your dad was Pete Mitchell. Pete Mitchell. And um, could you tell us a little bit about Pete because there's there's a big part of Cohasset history with with Pete. Well, I mean he was where he he started. Uh, you were we were talking about where he started. He, well, he uh, he worked at uh, Writer's Garage where the Red Lion is now, and uh, so when I'd go to uh, visit my friends from school. I'd come back to the garage and get a ride home. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a long way to get to Beachwood. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then he uh, he did work over. He worked in Quincy at Stoneberg Motors, and he used to bring home the different delivering cars. And he'd sometimes he'd come home with that motorcycle with the seat. Oh, across yeah. the back, and we just love to have him bring one of those home and take us for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> and then he he uh, started business over at uh, Conway's Garage, over the corner of Forest Avenue and North Main Street there, for a while until he uh, opened up the one on Three A, Mitchell's Repair Shop. Right. The Golf Station. The Golf Station. So, yeah. So. So, which is now a nursery, if anyone wants nursery, to know where Mitchell's garage so, so was. My, but mother, my mother lived in the house next door, and that house was moved from up and back of the beach of ball field down to, to 3A, so. So that's where she lived. And that, that garage is right where Brewster Road is now, and that Brewster Road was yeah. obviously a new. Yes, it was a new development. Right. Um, so Mitchell's Garage, I mean, that was pretty popular when, obviously, very popular when we were when we were growing up because right. the station at 3A and Beechwood Street wasn't there at that time. No. Yeah. Um, and one of the photographs which we'll show is um, just all field going up 3A. 3A. There was no Curtis Liquor Plaza. No. There was there was nothing. It was no, just there was, there was the A and P. Yeah, the A and P. Nothing else. <laughs> Just trees, trees, trees. I mean, when, yeah. When three A was built, you know, that was the state road. You know, that was something. Yeah. Wonderful to have that three A built. <laughs> so one of the points that we we also talked about was your first home. Um, that when you were living at the community center, you wanted to buy your own home, and. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, Stuart's father, who uh, was a justice of the peace and notary public and settled estates for everybody, found that the house next to him was for sale. So we bought the house for $1,500. It had no wiring, no plumbing, no heat or anything. <laughs> so we had to... Had a roof. That was the key. Roof. Yeah. Well, no cesspool yeah. and, and all that. So, so it, it took us a year to get it ready for us to move into. Yeah. So Janet was a year old when we moved in. So we had had finished with two bedrooms in the bathroom and the two rooms downstairs. So there were a lot of rooms that were unfinished for quite a while. But it was built circa 1750. Yeah. So it was an old home. Probably with it was good bones. originally it was a salt box, and they made lots of money in the uh, Civil War and raised the roof up. Okay. And to make it a two-story. Two story. And it had an old shoe shop attached to the side, which we tore down. But, but this is where family comes in handy. When you have a home that needs a lot of work, you you call on relatives Everybody, and friends, yes, yeah, yes, so. to get that plumbing and electricity, et cetera, so done. Over the years, I've learned to be a carpenter's helper and a plumber's <laughs> helper, and but when it gets to the electrician, I don't do yeah. that. <laughs> so I actually, the house is built on a ledge. Yeah. And my dad was too big to fit 
underneath the crawl space, the, especially the crawl space under the kitchen where the pipes would freeze. Uh -oh. So I learned that was your about, job. That was my job. Yeah, that, those good old crawl space <laughs> homes in Cohasset yeah. built on ledge. Yeah. And I remember John when he was about four years old, and Stuart was working on the roof. And next thing we knew, the back of the house was real low. So it's like three stories like to the three top. stories. And he was up there on the roof. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's, that's a wonderful story, buying a house for 15. And that was a lot of money to pull it together. It was for, a lot of money back then. Yeah. I know. So um, and, and it turns out to be a beautiful center hall colonial that is, was finished just as a proper colonial home in, in Cohasset. Yeah. And a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into it. <laughs> well, as they say here in the uh, Heritage Trail book, it was a jo Jonathan Pratt's house. Yes, yeah, Jonathan mm -hmm. Pratt's house. Right. So um, after you, then you left Cohasset to go. We left Cohasset after in the 1981. Kids. Yeah, uh, all the kids. Stuart retired early and uh, from Quincy. And we moved up to Eastman, which is the planned community that Dartmouth College built. And so we, uh, we built a Yankee barn. And uh, we stored it all the plumbing and heating and everything. We put in a five fuel furnace uh, from Denmark that uh, we burnt wood when we were home. And oil when we were not. Mm -hmm. But you could burn gas, coal, or electricity with it. So so that's how I learned the plumbing and everything else, you know. Yeah. I even tiled my bathroom floors and things like that. Wow, that's that's wonderful. So it will show so you were part of the EMT group yes. when you moved to New Hampshire. Yes. Which was a so, uh, it was the emergency group, and they, <clears throat> it was all volunteer, but uh, since I left there, they're getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah. But you were saying that when when a call came in, you had to drive yourself yeah, to it. Yeah, drive, drive to the, to the uh, scene. Yeah. And Stuart would put his light on the pickup and drive me, and then the ambulance would know where to come, so. Wow. That's pretty but, amazing. But one day I was going to a call, and I we lived up on a hill, so I could oversee the lake and everything there. And I grabbed my coat, and and stood, we jumped in the car, and I was starting down the hill, and it was so icy. We had to pull over to the side, so I had to get out. I got out of the the uh, vehicle. And I slid the whole way down the hill and had my radio with me. Oh. So, so I, I called and I said, I won't be answering the call. <laughs> so everybody knew what had happened. So, um, so one of the fun things in looking back, you know, growing up in your house is looking at your yearbook. So your 1941 yearbook was called, uh, the Piper. We were trying to figure out how many years the yearbook was called the Piper, but certainly the earlier years, right. the Piper, and we yeah. figured just a handful was called the Beacon before it yeah. turned to be the Tessa Hawk. So this is fun looking at your, um, the, the, everyone gets little nicknames in here under their yearbook, and yours was Sunshine, Sunshine. which I think is so <laughs> fun. Um, Yes, beside because you're sitting beside a guy or standing who is as grumpy looking face as possible, but you are sunshine. That that's perfect <laughs> for you. I, I love that. And just and Jan, Tessa Hawk, good old Tessa Hawk, and you happen to be the editor for this particular year, which is fun. Um, and uh, so, how many? students graduated in your class, do you remember? 26. 26 students. Eight girls. Oh, and, wow. And, and 18 boys, so. So 
So when we went on the class trip to New York, it was the last year the Eastern Steamship Lines went from Boston to New York. So our parents were down at the canal waving to us as we went through. <laughs> That was a big deal going to New York. Yeah, particularly going through the canal to get to New York. That was. And Jan, how many, how many in your graduating class do you I remember? Think there were 76, 78, something like that. Okay. We just had our 50th reunion back in uh, 2013. 13. 13. Wow. So. I have to tell it has been so much fun. I have never interviewed a mother and a daughter graduating from CHS. Certainly, <laughs> it's been so much fun to talk to you, Sunshine. Now that I, I just love your nickname, and um, I, you know, I, I am so thrilled with all of the details and the stories that you had to tell. So I appreciate very much for coming in today and talking to us, and I really enjoyed my my time with you Eileen thank you so much yes. thank you Jan thank you. take care yes. thank you bye bye